Thanks for tuning in today. We'd like to give you a little step-by-step -step instructional video on how to install fire pits. We've had a lot of interest in the past on how to really fast and efficiently build a fire pit in the correct way, in the correct manner. In explanation, what we've mocked up here is a patio. We have a retaining wall here. We're going to do our fire pit in this area. Generally speaking, on a patio, you always have slope. ICPI recommends 3 16 per foot. When you're building a fire pit, I highly recommend not laying it on that slope. We want our fire pit level. It's going to be aesthetically pleasing to your eye. You're going to see a nice level fire pit. Another thing I would highly recommend not doing, and that is putting your fire pit on top of your paver patio. Do not lay it directly on top of the pavers. You want that to move independently because it is. It's a lot of weight. You get the weight on the edge of a paver. If you have a small paver, next thing it could settle that area because of the added weight. So I'm going to show you how to get that area dead level. The center of fire pit, according to plan, is supposed to be six feet off this wall. I'm going to make a nice mark there. Then I'm supposed to be 14 feet off of my stair. I'll run that up to my step. Hook that edge. I know my fire pit ring is a 51 inch radius approximately. So what I want to do is I want to measure out a couple inches beyond that. So I'm going to go 27 inches out beyond. Those two marks are going to be where I'm going to put my screed rails so I'm not interfering with my ring then once I lay that out. The next uh, process would be to establish the height of what I want my fire pit ring. I generally will choose the center because if this has got a slope through it, I'm going to want to dig part of my fire ring into the higher end and the bottom side will raise out of the base just a little bit. Again, 3 16 pitch. I'm running across approximately four feet, four times three, 12 16, so three quarters of an inch. So basically, if I'm three eighths of an inch into the base on the one side, 3 8 out of my base on the other side, that's my happy medium point. That's why I always choose the center of my fire ring for that elevation height. My laser's spinning. Now with my laser, using my laser rod, I have this set at zero elevation. This gives me the opportunity to set any benchmark on my job site to zero elevation. The internal foot now, I can loosen. That allows me to keep my measurement at zero and yet set my height so once I have zero elevation I tighten this all my math can be built off this laser rod here zero whether it be plus or minus all my dimensions are built into the laser rod I've chosen a one inch screed rail one inch outside diameter, real heavy side wall. This is what we use for our screed rails when we're laying out our patios, our walls. It's a great option. What I'll do is I have to get this down to my elevated height, which we know is the top of my bedding layer here. This is a 3 8 chip stone that we're using for a bedding layer. Great option for when you're laying your patios or walls. I'll dig this down into my base. My next one, I'll dig this one in. Keep in mind, that's out beyond my ring of my fire pit. Using my laser rod, I'm gonna set this on this pipe. So I've dug it down in. Remember with lasers, a fast beep is high, slow low. If you remember the slow low, it's helpful. Then using my hand tamp, I'll generally set my toe on the pipe. That's dead level.
So because of the slope on this patio, this one's a little bit low, which is fine. I'm just gonna simply add a little of my bedding layer to make it high. And now, I tamp it. This pipe's set dead level. Now maybe just to explain a little bit, this is gonna eliminate me down on my hands and knees with a level and trying to get this exact, exact. If I'm setting this with pipes, I know for a fact once I screed it again, my base will be dead level. I've got these pipes dead level. Now I'm ready to screed for my second time, get a perfectly level setting bed. The top side, I shouldn't have to add a whole lot here. Using my, my screeder package, I'm gonna relay out my center point, six feet off, and my 14 feet. The nice part about a 3 h chip stone, if I walk lightly, I can walk right on the stone without leaving an impression. If I had a C33 sand and I step on it, I am going to leave an impression and then it will have an impact on my stone when I go to lay it. Using a grade rod or a piece of rebar, I'm going to drive this down into my center point. If you keep this nice and plumb, that's going to help you to establish your circumference much easier. We don't want this on an angle, and you'll see why using our radius template marker. Using my radius template, I'm gonna set my radius to the outside, and I said it was 51 inches. That would make it 25 and a half. The notches in here will help me determine where that is. That's 26, 25 and a half right in between there. I can tighten that up. At this point, I don't need to be super accurate. 24, 25 and a half. I'm gonna do the same on both sides. 25 and a half is to this point right here. The radius template has a hole here that's gonna slip over the top of my grade rod. I know that this point is 25 inch. So just holding this simply, I can mark out, just so you can see this on camera, I'm gonna go back with my paint, which I normally wouldn't do, but I'm just gonna paint it so you're able to see exactly where I'm laid out. So using a couple BL-180s, it's a nice feature that I can use getting the block from pallet to pavement without putting my hand in harm's way. So when you get your last two pieces in, you may have to do a little bit of adjustment. Obviously you have a line on the outside that has some width to it. So depending on whether you go on the outside of the paint or inside of the paint, you can have a little variation. If you do end up with a gap, when you put your last two pieces in, just simply start tightening up that circle, making sure that you're not too far off your center point here. It's crucial that you keep it fairly close to this radius mark here. So one of the added beauties, using the pipes as a system, 
set with a laser, screening off, I'm always, always guaranteed to have perfect results. I'm dead, dead level, as level as you're gonna get, and solid, dead level. I can check it in several different areas, dead level again. So that's really the beauty of using the pipe system. I see too many guys checking it and they're whaling products and then they're pulling it out and they're adding product and they're putting it back in. Stop, there's no need to be doing that. You should never ever have to hit these blocks. Set them nice and level, do what you're supposed to do with the pipes, screed it, lay your product and you're good as gold. The next step before I lay my second course would be to find my halfway point. So this product here being nine and three quarters, I'm going to be four, and seven eighths. I've chosen to use my Quickie Classic Series Fire Vents in this application. These are high grade stainless steel. This particular one, which we have three different sizes, this particular one matches the exact spec to this product. So it's 2.9 high by 9.75 wide. This will literally take the place of one of these blocks. Keep in mind if you are building a fire pit and it's gas, you need that circulation underneath your platform of your uh, fire and you will need circulation through there. You want to eliminate having any gas build up if ever there was a leak and having a type of uh, explosion which would not be good. So this allows ventilation. Also, if you're doing a regular wood fire pit, it does allow for air to come in from the bottom and pull it up through to the top. And again, helping to eliminate some of that smoke and having a, a real smoky fire. Another unique thing about the Classics here is you can, you can muscle these and bend these on a radius. So if you're doing a fire ring, and say you're doing out of natural stone and it really is a sweet, sweet radius, you can bend these and get that radius in there and really curve those nicely, and it gives it that real classy, classy look. I'll choose to put these across from each other, being square to my job here. And we're ready to lay our second layer. My halfway mark there. Once I get my ring, you may have to make some adjustments just to fit those pieces again. It's a matter of just opening or closing the circle to make that piece fit perfect. So just to show you how accurate these products are made, I literally can take my classic fire vent out and install my other piece. You can see it's an exact fit for that piece, nice and tight. Very simple to install. So when it comes to capping my fire pit, I love to choose a nice looking cap with a little bit of an overhang, gives it a real nice crisp professional look. I've chosen this particular cap, which this is a three piece system. So you have your small, your medium, and you have your large. To use a large piece like this would really look lousy. It'd get really choppy around here and not look professional at all. It's nice if you can get some smaller pieces. So I've chosen to make all my pieces approximately this size, which is nine inches. It's a little over nine inches. But I have to do some math. So some math is involved in figuring out my circumference. Circumference is two times pi times r. So two times 3.14 is pi times r is your radius. My radius is 25 to the face of my fire pit. I chose to do a two inch overhang. It looks nice and crisp and professional. That would be 27. So when I do my math, two pi r times 27 inches, I come out to 169, I believe it's 0.64 inches. Now I can do my math. And if I divide that by my nine inch piece, obviously it's not gonna come out exact, but I can get really close as to how many pieces I need. And I am, I'm using my smallest piece because I want these all symmetrical. I'll cut the nine inch pieces out of these larger pieces. So just make sure, it's, it's really uh, crucial you do your math ahead of time 
before you even start capping so you don't run out of material and then that leads to uh, lost time. When I do my math, I come out with 18 pieces. On this particular product, there's 18 that are on a layer and I need 19 pieces to complete this. To help you with your math and measurements, if you go to our website and you go to radius template, scroll down at the bottom, you're gonna see a link you can click on. That'll bring you to our math table and I've laid out the circumference of all the products or all the math up to 36 inches. So you'll see what your circumference is. So then you can decide taking your largest piece, your smallest piece, doing your math as to how many pieces you're going to need to cap your fire pit. So when it comes to marking these exact pie pieces on a fire pit cap, any type of radius, we've established or created the radius template. This is a phenomenal tool that makes it super easy, helps you with your math, helps you get in these perfect cuts. We've created it with the radius measurements on the two sides. We've also created it with your width of your cap here up to 14 inches. It also has a hole here that you can drop over your center pin. So once I drop this over, I can get my radius. I'm going to adjust it now because I know from my center pin to my face, I'm 25 inches. I want this 27 inches. All these notches are an inch. You can obviously choose a measurement in between here. So 24, 25, 26, and 27. I can tighten it down on the one side. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. 24, 25, 26, and 27. I can tighten this one down, but I will, I'll leave it here. Because when I do this, I can slide these notches. You can't see underneath the product, but I have these 90 degree angles that I can lock right onto this unit and then I can tighten that up. So I've locked these corners on here. This gives me my exact taper that's needed to make all exact caps around this entire thing. So now all I'm gonna do I want to make sure I'm engaged up in here tight into these 90s. Take my marker. I'm simply just going to mark these pieces. I've got a perfectly marked piece, very consistent. When I cut all my pieces around here, they'll drop in exact. If you're wondering, I'm also going to use these larger pieces. My 90 is not necessarily going to fit around those pieces because this is a lot wider, but I can lock it onto one side. And if I choose to, I don't even have to do this on the, uh, on the, on the wall here. I'm just going to make sure that this is locked in this point. This is locked in here. Mark the one side, I mark my other side. We know this is that exact dimension, I'm just transferring it over onto this block. I'll also do this one. And this can be done, like I said, right at the pallet. I don't need to drop this onto this pin. I just lock this end over here and make sure that this unit right here is on the outside of that block. These three pieces are all identical. Now we'll do some cutting. We'll show you how professional this looks when it's done. When it comes to cutting my caps, I've chosen at this point to cut wet with all the dust regulations uh, on site. We want to make sure that we're, uh, we're not putting that dust, the silica is up in the air. So cutting wet can be pretty messy. So I'm just going to take a lot of the uh, products when they get delivered to you, have a protective bag over it. We use those bags to make ourselves up a set of chaps so we don't get ourselves all muddy and you obviously know how messy that can be. So I've got my chap made up. This again is going to be nice and clean. Another thing you'll notice, when cutting wet, this is a crucial element. I've added a Y into my hose, so I have my water source here. I got a nice little short jumper hose. When we're cutting, all this slurry 
gets into your product. Say I'm cutting a long driveway or a walkway and I got to cut 60 feet. When you cut four or five feet on a really hot sunny day, you want to wash that off instantly. You don't want to have to be disconnecting, hooking up to another hose. If you do a, a system like this, I can simply set my water up and I can wash off my pavers so that I can get that slurry out of the pores of the product so it's not getting impregnated in there and leading to more problems down the road. I'm ready to cut. I've chosen to do it on a pallet. This is a good choice. Use a pallet, another piece of block. We don't want our product sitting down in the mud where it adds an extra step of having to wash that product off. Pallet's nice and clean. It keeps the water away from the product. When cutting, I'm using a handheld cutoff saw and I will be cutting wet. So when I'm cutting the product, a lot of, a lot of contractors ask, how do you keep that saw straight? And this is something you learn over time. Obviously, I've been at it 37 years in the hardscape industry, so it becomes a little bit more natural. But so, just some tips you can do. You can use a, a square, a speed square, hold it on your edge and give yourself a vertical line down the front. And that way there you can run and do that front piece and then kind of work your way back. That way there you're assured that you're gonna have a nice vertical um, cut right there at that point. If you're going out to the outside edge, you can watch this line and run your blade and it looks something like this. So when I'm cutting, I'll be over here and I can watch that blade all the way down to the bottom and then work my way back through my cut. You're gonna to wanna to score it first. You don't wanna start cutting back into the product. So score it first, you have a nice little cut line and then do your vertical cut. I'll try to show that when I'm making that cut so you can see it. I've got my water hooked up. I'm ready to start cutting. Many times I'll score that dry just to make sure I don't lose that line. Some of your markers will stay. When you're wet, some of the markers will just disappear. So you want to make sure you don't lose that mark. I'll just hit it lightly. Now I can turn on my water. my water on. Nice vertical cuts. So you can see I have all 19 of my capstones cut. One thing I want to point out, this is something you can give consideration to for those rainy day jobs. You see if I'm cutting wet, just how messy of a job it is. It's horrific. You're making a total mess of a job site. You may not have a spot where you can cut wet on a job site. So this is a great opportunity. Those rainy days, using the radius template, you can pre-cut all your product. So if you know you got four or five fire pits lined up over the next several months, it's a great rainy day job. Cut your pieces, you can bring them to the site and just simply lay them in place. One way to set my first stone with my distance away, slide it down over my center point. This will lock right onto that. Push it out. That should be right in line where it needs to be. I now can lay all my caps off that one point. I hope you enjoyed our video on how to build a fire pit, including using our radius template.
Make sure you find us on PaveTool.com, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook.